Oh, I just love it. I love Queen City. Y'all are amazing. Cincinnati is beautiful. So much heart and soul uh, in this city. So much heart and soul in this church. I'm really excited. Maybe you not so much. I love it when the pastor's like, I've got a great preacher from Iowa. Everybody's like, Iowa? <laughs> is he going to talk about corn today or potatoes? No, that's Idaho. Iowa, Iowa, it's, it's an honor, it's an honor. Just when you said I was in there laughing, I was like, oh my gosh, he's like from Iowa, you guys from Iowa? So it's good, it's good to be with you guys today. Uh, as Pastor Brian said, my name is Q, and I have the privilege of serving uh, as the lead pastor. Much like you guys, my wife and I moved uh, to, to Waterloo, Iowa, and planted a church uh, coming up on six years, and it's been an amazing journey um, of just watching God do some incredible things through ordinary people. And, um, and he's doing the same thing here, and that's, that's been breathtaking, that's been refreshing, um, especially as I've gotten a chance to spend some time with your pastor, uh, 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 Brian, and just uh, the lead team even, the executive lead team, and, and just getting to know their hearts. Uh, like your pastor, I get to travel a lot, and I get to meet all kind of pastors and leaders, and, and they're, not all, they're not all the same. I mean, you guys know people are people. And one of the things I love about your pastor, I'll just, I'll just brag on him for a minute, is... Um, is the amount of clarity that he has for what you, for what you, Queen City, have been called to do, our city, our responsibility. He bleeds that. We were together for like five hours last night. It was like 10 o'clock. I was like, Heather's going to kill me or you. You got to get home. And we were just lost in conversation, showing me the beauty of this city and, and really sharing with me a God-sized vision um, that God's put in, in their hearts for this city. So it's clarity number two is this confidence that God is up to something. Now, now here's what I've got to get you to see is that sometimes people with a lot of clarity and a lot of confidence lack compassion because they see so clearly what needs to be done that anyone in the way of that, they can kind of push them to the side. But that's the third thing I love about your pastor is his care for people. Like he's a shepherd. He walks amongst the sheep. His care for you, his concern for you, his compassion towards you in your spiritual journey. And so whether you're here for the first time or you would say you're a regular, uh, a, a, par a part of Queen City Church, one, it's an honor for me to be here with you. But then two, just please know from the bottom of my heart that you are being led by some incredible leaders and you have an incredible pastor. So would y'all help me this morning? Can we honor your, your team, your pastor? Yeah, you can clap for that. Honor is due. So just, just thank you for being that kind of a leader. I really... I really mean that. Hey, hey, I'm really, I'm really, I'm like really excited for this morning. I think what we're going to talk about is going to help us in our spiritual journey, especially as we celebrate the 4th of July and Independence Day and fireworks and corn and hot dogs and slushies and ice cream and all the stuff that makes us look out of shape but so good to eat. Like, yes, I can't wait. When I'm done, I'm going to eat some hot dogs and some Skyline chili or something like that. But before we do that, before we do that, let's, we're going we're gonna to we're gonna jump into God's word. Um, Queen City, I really believe that if there's a queen, there's got to be a king. And I really believe God's preparing this city for the coming of the king. And you get to partner with God on events like Serve Day where you get to love your city well and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I'm grateful that I get to be a part and to see what God's doing here in this amazing city. Together, I believe we'll change the world. So let me pray for us and hopefully get equipped to be those kind of people that change the world. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for those who are, who are in the room, those who are watching online. Thank you that you love them, you know their name, you understand their story. There's not a place they've been that you've not been there. There's not a place there they'll go that you won't meet them there. Father, now I ask as I share from your word that you would speak, that God, that I would decrease, that you would increase in Jesus. We would be better because we've spent time with you. We've hearkened our ear to your word. We've received nourishment and sustenance for the journey that's ahead. Thank you for this people. Would you now use me to make a difference today? In Jesus' name, amen. Um, before I jump into the message and, and talk about where we're going to go and, and what we're going to do, I've had the privilege, as I said, over the last 24 hours to meet your family. It's amazing people, Nat and Sam and Lauren and 
Caroline. I mean, just, I met a guy named Tyler, uh, Joel, who's up there helping with production team, folks serving over there in children's ministry. I mean, I've met your family, Queen City, and y'all are amazing, but I want y'all to meet mine too, at least via picture. So if I can show y'all my, my crew, uh, it's all. Uh, so this is my amazing wife, Angela. We've been together. It'll be 27 years, October the 1st. Praise break. <laughs> All the married people are like, oh, Lord Jesus, how they do it. Uh, 27 years. She's my high school sweetheart. Uh, this beautiful girl right here with the glasses on, that's uh, our daughter. Uh, um, Kaylee is her name. She's 25. She'll be 26 in August. She's my little ray of sunshine. She's a lot like me. She's a party in a box. Uh, wherever she goes. And then that's my boy, uh, my, my son, Jonathan Levi, uh, but we call him Bubba, Bubba. So everybody, you got you to gotta know at least one Bubba in life, and so there you go. That's my Bubba. That is the Marshall crew. I love them so very much. And um, yeah, I just want to try to meet, meet my people, you know what I'm saying? Now, my people have met y'all people, and so that's my, that's my amazing family. And the thing I love about this crew right here is that uh, we know how to have fun, learn a lot, and we've, we've been on a journey together. I, I wish I could tell you that it's always been smooth traveling, but it hasn't. And I imagine that's the same thing that's true for your life. Um, summertime, we love the summers like you all. We get all four seasons in Iowa. Our summers are pretty short. I mean, our winters, we can snow all the way into the month of May. Um, I know, it's stupid, uh, but I love it, right? I love, I love the place where I'm from. Um, and so when the summertime comes, you know, everybody's excited. We want to take advantage of the warm weather, especially in light of everything that happened last year, right? I mean, last year was like, come on, ah. I mean, like, we don't want to go back to that, right? And so now it's like summertime, stuff's opening up. One of the things, like, in Iowa, I imagine that's here with the seasons, a lot of construction happens in the summer because you can't really do a lot of road construction in the winter. It's summertime, so people are working. Y'all are traveling. Vacations, come on, somebody. I mean, it's like it's time to get out and to get moving. But here's what happens oftentimes during the summertime or as you travel, especially as things are opening up, you'll run into these little things called <laughs> detours. Y'all don't know what they're orange little sign says detours like life hates me. <laughs> and uh, detours, man, they have a way of just man, they disrupt all your plans. They they throw monkey wrench in the, the road map that you've got you know charted out for where you want to go. And oftentimes life is a lot like like detours. And especially if you've traveled life for any amount of time, then you've 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 hit some detours. And so today, what God's up, I just want to be a little bit of a tour guide, if I can, for the next few moments. Kind of help you get some perspective when you get into a detour and to maybe even, to, to, to maybe even help prepare you for the detours that life will throw at you. Because they're coming, it's not if, but a when. And so one of the reasons why I think we don't like detours, if you're a note taker, I'm going to give you some things to write down. And, and this is going to be the first one that I want you to write this down when it comes to detours, is that, is that detours, what they tend to do is disrupt our plans, distract us, and delay us from getting to our destination. That's why we don't like them. Detours come, and they just disrupt our plan. We, we plan to be somewhere in this allotted amount of time, but we didn't know that road was under construction, and so now we've got we to take a detour. It's a, it's, it's, a little, it's a little disruptive, detours are, because you can't plan for them because you don't, you don't know they're present until you come in front of them. Siri hasn't updated yet. GPS is still calculating, calculating, calculating. They are a little distractive as well. You can't go the route that you love to take. It's the route you always go, and now you've got to go a different direction. And by the way, everybody, we're going to be late getting to where we want to get to. What if I told you that life was like those kinds of detours? Life at times will throw you off the beaten path. It will cause you to get redirected. It's a little disruptive. Detours. Many of you are in the room today because of a detour. I'm, I'm grateful for the detour of last year because without it, they would have never gotten Memorial Hall and some of you would have never found this place you now call home. This detour led you to this destination and that way this detour has been a great thing. Other detours are devastating. Maybe you buried someone 
who you love, they died because of a detour in light of COVID. Maybe you graduated last year and it wasn't quite the way you thought it would be. You didn't walk across the stage, you just had to see it on the screen. That was a devastating detour. Detours can turn out for our good, even though in the moment they may seem bad. So why do we experience detours? I think there's three reasons why. Actually, I want you to write this down. This is going to help you navigate the course. And the first reason that we all experience detours, number one, write this down, is our sin. It's our sin. No one else's fault. It's our sin, our shortcoming, our lack of follow through. It's the things that we want that we should not have. It is our sin. Write this down if you're a note taker, that we travel oftentimes off the beaten paths into dead ends and down wrong roads. It's, it's our sin. No one did this to me. I made the decision to go this direction. My sin has led me off the beaten path more times than I would care to admit. I've gotten down the wrong road. I've ended up on a dead end road. My sin has led me there. How do you know that your sin can lead you there? Well, because the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 56 verse 3 that we all are like sheep. We all go astray. Each one has gone to their own way. But God is a good, gracious, and kind king who always comes after the things that he loves. God will always leave the 99, and it doesn't make sense until you're the one that he went after. What I love about Jesus, he didn't just see you from a far away, point his finger at you. He stretches out his hand to lift you up. He's the kind of king who will carry you back to where you need to be, not just tell you where you need to go. When we sin and fall short, of which we all will, which means this room right now in this context, White Shield Online, has become the safest place you've been all week because it's okay to not be okay. Because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. The ground is level at the cross. What I love about Queen City Church is that they really believe, really no one's perfect. Anything is possible, therefore everyone can be welcomed. And so today I want to join that, that voice, that echo that comes from this platform that says this. We want to help you get to where God wants you to be from where you are even when life takes a detour. The second reason we go on detours, quite honestly, is... It's not even us, it's other people. It's other people. 90% of everything in your life that you'll experience will happen with someone else. Take your greatest memory and your deepest heartbreak, and more likely, more likely than not, you'll find a face of someone familiar standing next to you. Our lives are deeply impacted by the people we do life with. I'll say it this way. Your life is the average of the five people who you spend the most time with. TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, MSNBC, and Fox News all count as one of those five. Your life is the average of the five people who influence you the most. Let me say it this way. Whoever has your ear will shape your future. Whoever has your ear is shaping your identity. See, what happens when people influence us, they inform us. You, you know what that means, right? They are forming something inside of you. And as it pertains to detours and dealing with them and how we get off road, here's what you got to write down. Here, let me say it this way, that other people can get in the way of God's plan for your life. Now, they can't stop it, but they can't get in the way of it. I didn't say they can stop it. Only person who can do that is you. You can get everything God has for you if you'll say yes to him. No one can prevent God from getting his hands on you and reshaping the broken pieces of your life but you. God knows every place, every part of your heart that broke fell to. He is a master architect. He does his best work with broken pieces. He makes beautiful mosaics. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. It's other people who will influence or hinder what God wants to do in your life if you allow them access to your heart. Paul said it this way, don't be misled. 1 Corinthians 15, don't be misled. Bad company. Your friendships, they impact your character. My mentor said to me when I first gave my life to Jesus, he said, Quavadas, people will do one of two things that will bring you up or tear you down. So then he said this, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. My mama used to say it this way. she said, say, baby, you know, birds of a feather flock together. You don't see pigeons hanging out with eagles, do you? <laughs> baby, birds of a feather flock together. I'm just talking about detours. And um, really, 
I'm talking about maybe how you ended up where you are today. Like no one will, no one drifts toward their destiny. Like you can't drift to where God wants you to be. You'll, you'll end up somewhere you didn't plan. And for some of us, we haven't planned and that's why we are where we are today. So when you talk about detours, it's, it's my sin. Sometimes my, my sin, I am, I am prone to go after the thing that I shouldn't lay my hand to, but my heart wants it, even though I know that it's bad for me. And when I think about this last year and everything we've gone through as a people, as a person, as a nation, as a community, as a church, I understand that I've went after, I've, I've, I've looked to, I've, I've laid hold of, I've, I've longed for things that I want to satisfy me because I'm longing for what only God can give to me. So here's what we tend to do. We tend to medicate what God wants to heal. So my sin leads me in a direction I shouldn't go. And then oftentimes, more often than not, it's other people who I allow to do life with me that will take me down detours. But there's good news that even though my sin can get me off the road and people can lead me down the wrong direction, ultimately, one of the reasons we all experience detours, and here's the good news, it's because it's God's plan. Detours. Detours. Why would you say that? I want you to write this down, then I want you to think about this thought that ultimately the good and guiding hand of God is directing your steps. There's nowhere you go that he doesn't have his eye on you or won't put his hands on you to direct your steps. He's just that good. I've got two children. They're amazing. They can move around pretty good now, but when they were younger, boy, was it a hoot, Heather. You know how kids are when they're trying to, they got Twizzler legs, you know, they're kind of like, you know, like, baby, you go, you know, like, you go make it, you know, and, and as a dad, you just kind of, you kind of get to guide them a little bit and, you know, might like grab their hand a little bit. And, and, and I, I, I like to think of God that way. Like, 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 God is a father and he's the God of the big target. Like, he can put a blindfold on you, spin you around, and then he's got that bullseye and he's going, yep, yep, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. He's just that good. When I was preparing, um, I felt like the Lord, in the middle of this, um, I knew that there were some ones who would say at this point, but you don't know how far off the beaten path I am. Man, I'm not in a detour. I'm, I'm just, man, I'm lost. I don't even know how to find, I don't know how to even find my way back. I can't tell people that I'm doing this. Like if the secret got out, I'd be ruined. And um, I mean, I would just say to you, like nobody's, you can't, you can't break it so bad that God can't fix it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Like the victory you're longing for, it's on the other side of your vulnerability. And if I know that ultimately God's good and gracious hand is guiding my life, then I can get honest with him about the ways in which I've taken some detours. I love what, I love what it says in, in Proverbs. If, you, if you're a note taker, you want to get this one down. It's Proverbs chapter 19, verse chapter 19, verse 21. You want to look this up later. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21 says this, that many are the plans in man's heart. But it's actually the purposes of the Lord that prevail. Like he goes, plan all you want, but just know that my good hand will guide and direct you. In the way. So then in other words, in other words that, that dead end was God's mercy. That relationship that didn't go anywhere, that business deal that didn't, that didn't go through those people who walked away from you. He goes, that dead end, that was my mercy. I could see on the other side of it, and it wasn't going to be good for you. That detour that took you out of the way and around the corner, that plan you had that didn't quite work out, that was me fathering you. That was me loving you. And I love what Pastor Brian says. He says this, obedience is success. My job isn't to figure it all out. My job is just to follow the Father's leadership. 
and to trust that he's good. So what does that mean? Well, Pastor Q, you don't understand. I'm a woman in waiting. I've been waiting a long time. I want my life to get better. I want stability. I want success. I'm looking for significance, whether it's the girls or the fellas who got an issue. Let me tell you, let me be very clear, very, very, very clear, very clear, very clear. James makes it abundantly clear. He says, every good and every perfect gift. Say good. good. Say perfect. perfect. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. What does that mean then? If you don't have it, then it's not good for you or it's not the right time. So therefore, you can trust God's plan. Okay? How do I know that? Because God... God uses our detours to bring us to his ultimate destination for us. I know that to be true. 20 plus years walking with Jesus. I know to be true that the road that felt like a detour was actually God redirecting my steps to lead me home. If you would have met me 20 some years ago, in the direction that my life was going, you would have never believed that it would have led me here. I wasn't raised in church. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a church kid. I, I didn't have a mother who took me to church on Sundays. I didn't have a grandma who was praying over me. All I had was survival skills, a, a bad attitude, and a, a very broken home life. I'm the oldest boy of five children. My mother was poor her whole life. We ate at soup kitchens and lived in people's basements. By the time I was 14, I had my first child, that little girl you saw in that picture. I know, I don't look old enough to have a child that, that old. Uh, black don't crack, number one. <laughs> And, uh, uh, come on, somebody, hey, preach, uh, uh, preach, Bishop. Uh, and, and then, and then, and then, and then, secondly, and then, secondly, I was a really young dad. I've been a dad longer than I've not been one. I became a father at 15 years old. Deeply involved in gang violence, in and out of juvenile placements my entire life 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Every one of those years, I was incarcerated somewhere. Again. If you met me 20-some years ago, you wouldn't have assumed that I'd be here doing this. August 23rd, 1997, we lived in a very small town right outside of my hometown, and I was at my wit's end. I knew this. I knew that if heaven and hell were real, I knew enough to know that bad people didn't get into God's heaven. I didn't know that good people don't get there either. Only forgiven people do. Okay, so I knew that, I knew that, I knew that God was real because of all the devilish things that I had done with my life, and I knew that my life stood in judgment. I wasn't raised in church, I didn't know the difference between an epistle, an apostle, or a disciple, and I'm still a little bit confused, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't know nothing about nothing. I, I didn't know nothing, about, I didn't know of Jesus, Allah, Buddha, Har, Christianism, Taoism, Shintoism. I didn't know who God was, nor did I know my way to life. I was in darkness, my mind had been blind by the God of this world. I knew to worship the God of self, but not the God of eternity. So on August 23rd, 1997, I sat my girlfriend down and told her everything that I had done wrong, and it crushed her. I walked into the living room for about two hours through tears. I spoke to this God I had never seen. I did not know, but if he was real, then he had to listen to me. I just needed God more than I needed anything, and I ended the night with this prayer. God, if you're real, show me, and I'll give you everything. I'll cash in all the chips. I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning, and a man knocked on my door named Pastor Ilian. I said, you're a pastor, aren't you? He said, I am. Can I tell you about Jesus and how he forgives sins and how in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if anyone is in Christ, I said anyone, I don't care where you've been, if anyone is in Christ, they become a new creation. All things have passed away. I don't care how many boyfriends you had. I don't care how many girls you slept with. I don't care how many drugs you've used. I don't care what your prescription drugs you're abusing. He says if anyone is in Christ, I don't care about the divorce. I don't care about the bankruptcy. He says, if anyone's in Christ, you're made brand new. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He says, young man, do you want this? I said, yes. With everything in me, yes. 
He told me, he said, Jesus Christ is the son of God. He died for your sins, and in him and through him, you can have new life. I said, please, I, I, I want this. He gave me a Bible, took me to the Gospel of Matthew, walked away. I didn't see him again for 22 years. About a month ago, two, three weeks ago, that man who led me to Jesus lost his battle to cancer and received his reward. They asked me to speak at his funeral. And I got, a, I got an opportunity to talk about what happens when you sow your life into the soil of someone else's story. And that's what serve day is. That's what serving on a team is. There's a Colvadis marshal walking through the doors of this church. He might be cleaned up and look nice, but his life's a mess. And you get the chance to listen to this. You get the chance to meet him on his detour. I wish I could say that after that moment, life got better and better. I mean, I became a great father, a good husband. I felt called to ministry. I wish, but I, about 18 months later, for time's sake, I'll tell you that at 19 years old, on July 22nd, having walked away from the church for three months, that was my detour, I walked into the store across the street from the church building that we now own with the loaded 380 Larson and stuck the gun in the man's face and demanded all the money in the cash register. How about that for a detour? I never made it out the store. The cops came in. I was sentenced to prison for seven years, four months. My daughter was three when I went to prison. She was 11 when I came home. Massive detour. Disruptive, devastating. But he's the God of the detour. And it was in that context that I went to Bible college. It was in that context I learned to teach. It was in that context I learned to preach. It was in that context I learned to pray. It was in that context I learned to lead. It was in that context I learned to strategize. It was in that context I learned to build teams. It was in that context, listen to me, you can't break it so bad that God can't fix it. He is the God of redemption. So when you come across the detour, know that God is at work. So write this down. When it comes to detours, it's on detours that God develops our characters and prepares us for his plan for our lives. It's on detours he prepares us for the purpose for which he's created us. See, what a detour, sometimes when they're doing road construction, you got to tear some stuff up before you can lay a new path. So if you feel like your life is kind of blown up at the moment, just know that God, hey, listen, construction just, construction just means you're under work. God, under construction just means God's at work. That's all it means. So if you can see that, it will change your perspective, and then you won't, you won't despise detours, but you will see it's all a part of God's process to lead you to God's destiny for your life. So number three, write this down. What do we do with detours? What do we do with them? Detours are a part of life because we are all under construction. Every last one of us. I told you, it's okay to be okay in here. It's okay to not be okay in here. To go, man, there's some stuff in my life I just, oh, man, pastor, I don't know how I got here. Like, I don't know, I don't know what to do next. I'm at a, I'm at a crossroads. I'm, it's a detour. I'd say you, you, um, you came to the right place today. came to the right place today. The question that we should be asking ourselves is, if detours are a part of the destination and we've all got to deal with them, ultimately, what is the destination that God wants to lead me to if I'm on a detour? 
If I'm on a detour, that if life comes with these detours, these defining moments where the direction I wanted to go, I can no longer proceed in, what does it mean? What is, what is God up to those relationships that crumbled, that didn't quite pan out the way that you wanted them to, those opportunities that all of a sudden vanished before you could lay hold of them, those, those areas of our lives that we kind of keep under wraps, the door closed with a do not enter sign on them, my daddy issues, my, my mama trauma. I mean, y- y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't don't look at me like y'all ain't got some. I'm looking at you, and I can tell. That stuff that you, that you don't want nobody else to know about, the place, where, the place that was supposed to be the safest for you, but really it's the place that, that scarred you. Like, like, what do I do on the detour? Well, I believe, man, God's laid it out. I believe God's a good father. He doesn't want to confuse us. He wants to help us. He's not, he's, not trying to, he's not trying to trip us up. He's trying to guide us. So one of the things I've learned to do when I, when I come across detours is, is to pay attention to what's in front of me. And sometimes we get on detours because we spend so much time looking at where we've been, that we don't, we don't really have the, the vision, the clarity, the confidence to, to move forward to where God wants us to be. Let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. No one drives looking in the rearview mirror. There's a reason the rearview mirror is smaller than the windshield. Because there's more in front of you than what's behind you. And sometimes we, end up, we, we stay on detours longer than we need to because we're looking at where we've been and the way we wish we could have went. I didn't plan to end up here. I know, but you're here now, baby. So what you gonna do about it? Well, well, here it is. Write this down. A failure to follow directions when it comes to detours will lead you down dead ends into a destructive path. A failure in real life to follow detours can lead you down dead ends and destructive paths. You ever say, I'm going to find my own way, and then you in a cornfield if you and I, where you're like, man, like, how'd I get here? I don't know how to get back. Let me tell you this one quick joke, real This is a funny illustration to it. This Baptist pastor, this Methodist pastor, both lived across the street from each other. Baptist pastor had a big old sign out in his yard, like this big, said, turn, the end is near. Methodist pastor uh, across the street from him, across the street from him said, destruction is ahead. Guy pulled up in a red Corvette, dropped top, looked at the Methodist pastor's yard, turned, the end is near, looked at the Baptist pastor's yard, destruction is ahead. He says, you old religious zealots, you guys are always preaching. And he sped up. Ah, <laughs> Baptist pastor looked at the Methodist pastor and said, maybe we should have just hit the roads out ahead. Some of y'all will catch you later. <laughs> y'all was in a different classroom. I'll like, catch you later. <laughs> catch you later. So what do you do when the road's out? When you're on a detour? Number one, follow the way. Write this down. Follow the way. You got, you got to follow the way, man. It is really, it is really that simple. I love what... I love, I, love what, I love what God says to the prophet Jeremiah. God's not asking you to make your own way. He's not asking you to figure it out. God is simply saying, I don't need you to try harder. I need you to trust greater. He says this through Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look. So you're at a crossroads. And I want you to do something. I want you to ask me for the ancient paths where the good way is. I want you to walk in it. Listen, beloved, and that's where you'll find rest for your soul. He goes, it's it's in following me is, is where you'll find rest for your soul. Some of you don't need a vacation. You don't need a few extra hours of sleep. Vacations provide rest to the body. Only Jesus provides rest to the soul. And he says, follow me and I'll, I'll bring you rest. How, how do I know that? Because Jesus says in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way. I'm the truth of life. 
the mystery yet to be unraveled by humanity. I am the source of all things living in a part from me. No one can come to my Father who loves and guides and cares and cherishes. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life that you seek. Just follow me. Which means obeying the signs. But we all have to, number two, obey the signs. When you are on a detour, it's detrimental to you getting to your destination that you just simply obey the signs. I love Psalms 119, 105. David says, God, your word is like a lamp to my feet. It's like these candles that, that are on the tips of my toes. God, your, your word is a, it's a lamp to my feet. Your word, your word is a light. It's a light for my path. And, and here's the thing, it can only show you what your next step is. So I'll show you your next step. I tell our church, if you, if you, want, if you want God's plan, you, you want abundant life, you want, you, want, you want wholeness, you want freedom, you want joy, not happiness. Happiness is based on happenstance. Happiness is based on what's happening around you. Joy is based on what's happening in you. Because if you want joy, you want peace, you want love, you want family. Because you gotta, you gotta work my plan. But, but for God's plan to work, then you've gotta work his plan. You can't get God's results doing it your way. So that means, if that's true, that God's for you, not against you. He's a good father who's guiding you. He sees the end from the beginning. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Here's the good news, then, on this pathway called life. You can enjoy the journey. If he's the captain, if Jesus take the will, it's true. Then you can enjoy the journey. And the way you enjoy it is by doing it, doing it with other people. It's by allowing people on this journey of life change and transformation. A place of, of new life, new beginnings, total surrender. The ultimate destination where God's leading you to, if you were to say, Pastor Q, where's all this going? It's to lead you home to him. It's to lead you home to him. Everything in your life that's happened to this moment is to lead you home to him. So I want to pray with you, for some of us, to take that journey home. Some of us is to return home and say, Father, I've, I've been away on the beaten path. I'm ready to return home. Can I pray with you, Queen City? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I ask you today that you would help us find our way back to you. Father, thank you that you are the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thank you that you're tender and merciful. Thank you that we're safe with you. We don't have to clean ourselves up no matter how long we've been gone and how rough the road has been. You run toward us. You welcome us in. As Pastor David spoke earlier, he said, uh, the greatest thing you can have is a child of God. And that's exactly what we are. If you're here today and you know you need to come home, will you raise your hand? I want to pray for you. I want to ask you to come forward. Yep, just right where you are. Is there anyone today who would say, I'm, I'm, I'm coming home? No more running. Thank you, sir. That took courage. Anyone else today? I see you over there, sir. Just right where you're at. This is you and the Father. It's you saying, Father, I'm coming home. Is there anyone else today? The light's on, the door's open. He says, come home to me. Come home to me. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, my father and I will make our home in him. 
Today, just say, Jesus, I, I surrender. I give my life to you. Jesus, thank you that you make all things new. You're a friend of sinners. You're a father to the fatherless. In Jesus' name, amen.